Hello dear students, welcome to Karna Mass Academy. Today in this video we are going to discuss entrance exam solution set 3. Question number 1, solve 3x plus 5y is equal to 21 and 3x plus 3y is equal to 12. And we are given 4 options A, B, C, D and we have to choose the right option. So let's go to the solution. Solution, question number 1. The first equation is 3x plus 5y is equal to 21. And the second equation is 2x plus 3y is equal to 12. And by solving first and second equation, we have to find the value of x and y, which will satisfy both the equation first and second. So before we solve the given equations, we can solve the equations by different methods. In this question, we are going to solve equation by elimination method which is also known as addition and subtraction method. According to the rule of addition and subtraction method, we have to make the coefficient of x in the equation first and second both equal, or we have to make the coefficient of y in the equation first and second both equal. In the first equation, the coefficient of x is 3. In the second equation, the coefficient of x is 2. Now, in order to make the coefficient of equation 1 and 2 both equal, we have to take the LCM of 2 and 3. The LCM of 2 and 3 is 6. That means we have to make the coefficient of x in both first and second equation equal to 6. We have to take the LCM. The LCM of 3 and 2 is equal to 6. That means we have to make the coefficient of x in the equation 1 and 2 both equal to 6. To make the coefficient of x in the first equation 6, we have to multiply it by 2. And to make the coefficient of x in the second equation 6 we have to multiply by 3 because 3 to the 6 then the coefficient of x in the first equation and second equation both are equal after make, making the coefficient of x or coefficient of y both equal we have to subtract the second step is we have to subtract equation 1 from 2 or equation 2 from 1 subtracting equation 2 from 1 subtracting equation 2 from 1 we get 2 3 is 6x, 2 5 is 10, 2 into 21, we get 42, 3 into 2 6, 3 3 is 9, 3 into 12, 36. Subtracting equation 2 from equation 1. In subtraction, we have to change the sign of the second equation. Plus and into minus, plus and into minus, plus and into minus. So according to the rule of addition and subtraction, or we can say, Elimination method, we have to change the sign of the second equation. So plus is changed into minus. Now plus 6 and minus 6, they cancel because they are equal and opposite sign. 10y minus 9y is equal to y. 42 minus 36, we get 6. The value of y, we have got 6. Now after getting the value of y, 6, we have to put the value of y, 6, either in the first equation or in the second equation to get the value of x. So putting the value of y equal to 6 in the first equation. We can choose any one of the two equations to find the value of x. Putting the value of y is equal to 6 in the first equation. 3x as it is. The value of y is 6. So 5, 6 are 30 equals to 21. 21 minus 30. We get minus 9. 3x is equal to minus 9. Therefore, x is equal to 3, 3 is 9. That means the value of x is minus 3. The value of x is minus 3 and the value of y is equal to 6. Therefore, x comma y, the value of x is minus 3 comma the value of y is 6, which is the required solution. And according to our question, minus 3 comma 6 is the option 1a. Minus 3 comma 6 is given in the option 1a. Minus 3 comma 6 is given in the first option, that means 1a. So number 1a is the required solution of the given two equations. So we have to circle question number 1a. Now, let's go to the next question, question number two. Dear students, in this video, we are going to discuss 19 important entrance exam questions and solution. So, please do not skip the video and watch till the end of this video. And if you have not sub subscribed this channel, please subscribe to Academy to get daily new updates. This channel is mainly focused on class 11 and 12 mathematics solutions so you have, if you have not subscribed please subscribe the channel let's go to question number two which of the following is a cube root of one which of the following is a 
cube root of 1. We are given A, B, C, D, four options, and we have to choose the best option. So let's go to the solution. In question number 2, we have to find out the cube root of 1. So let's suppose x be the cube root of 1. Therefore, cube root of 1, cube root of 1 is equal to x. Supposing cube root of 1 equals to x. Now, in order to find the value of x, that means the cube root of 1, we have to solve for x. We have to solve this equation for x. Now, in order to solve the equation cube root of 1 equals to x, we have to cube on both sides. Cubing on both sides, then cube and cube root will cancel. Then we get x cube is equal to 1. Plus 1 shifting to the left hand side, transposing to the left hand side, we get x cube minus 1 is equal to 0. Now if we factorize x cube minus 1 by using the formula of a cube minus b cube, the formula of a cube minus b cube is a minus b a square plus ab plus b square. By using the formula of a cube minus b cube, the factors of x cube minus 1 will be x minus 1, that means a minus b. A square means x square, plus ab means x into 1, plus b square means 1. The factors of x cube minus 1, by using the formula of a cube minus b cube, we get x minus 1, x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we have got two factors. Now we take either x minus 1 is equal to 0. The product of two factors will be equal to 0, only if one of the factor is equal to 0. So we suppose either x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. So when we take x minus 1 is equal to 0, then we get value of x is equal to 1. That means the value of x is equal to 1. That means 1 is the cube root of 1. The first cube root of 1 is 1. That means the number itself. Now taking the second factor, x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0, and factorizing and solving this equation for x. x squared plus x plus 1. The second factor is x squared plus x plus 1. So when we take x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0, then the given equation is quadratic equation in x. x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0 is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. That means x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. It's quadratic equation in x x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0, we cannot factorize. We cannot factorize the expression x squared plus x plus 1 by first into last method. So we have to factorize it by using the formula of quadratic equation. We have to find the solution of x squared plus x plus 1 is 0 by using quadratic, by using the formula of quadratic equation. We know the value of x according to quadratic, according to the formula of quadratic equation, the value of x is equal to minus b plus minus root b square minus 4 ac by 2a, where a is the coefficient of the first term, that means x square, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant term. The values of a, b, c, the values of a, b, c are 1, because the coefficient of x square is 1, the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x is 1, therefore b is equal to 1, and the constant term is 1. So we know the value of a, b, c all are equal to 1. So when we substitute the values of a, b, c, then we get minus 1 plus minus root, the value of b is 1, 1 is square means 1, 4 ac, 4 ac means 4 ones are 4, 4 ones are 4. The value of 4 ac is 4. Now 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3, root of minus 3. Therefore the value of x is minus 1 plus minus root of minus 3 divided by 2. When we take positive sign, then the first value of x is minus 1 plus root minus 3 by 2. And when we take negative sign, then the second value of x is minus 1 minus root minus 3 by 2. So altogether, we have got three values of x. That means we have got three cube roots of 1. Now the first root, that means x is equal to 1. The first root x is equal to 1 is called real root. And the other two roots are called imaginary roots. Because the root of minus 3 is undefined in the real number system. There is not any real number whose square is negative. There is not any real number whose square is negative. So we cannot find the square root of negative integers in the real number system. So the last two roots, the last two cube roots, that means minus 1 plus root minus 3 by 2 and minus 1 minus root minus 3 by 2. The last two roots are the imaginary cube roots of 1. According to the question, we have to find the real root. That means the real root, the real cube root of 1 is 1. So x is equal to 1 is the cube root, which is the given option 2a, which is the given option 2a. That means the cube root of 1 is equal to 1. 
the real cube root of 1 is 1. So we have to circle answer 2a. So 2a is the best option. Now let's go to question number 3. Question number 3. Derivative of tan x with respect to x. Derivative of tan x with respect to x is sec x, sec square x, sin x, cos sec square x. So we are given four options and we have to choose the best option. So let's go to the solution of question number 3. Solution of question number 3. We have to find derivative of tan x with respect to x. So let's suppose the given function tan x is equal to y. Let y is equal to tan x. Supposing the given function tan x equals to y. Now we have to find the derivative of the function y is equal to tan x. Differentiating y is function of x. So we have to differentiate the given function with respect to x. So derivative of y with respect to x. We can denote by dy by dx equals to dy dx of tan x because y means tan x. So dy dx of y means tan x. dy dx of tan x. Now derivative of tan x is equal to sec square x. According to the formula of derivative, the derivative of tan x is equal to sec square x, which is the given option 3b. Which is the given option 3b, sec square x. That means derivative of tan x is equal to sec square x. So 3b is the right option. So we have to circle answer 3b. Now let's go to question number 4. Question number four, the angle between two diagonals of a cube is always sine inverse two by three, cos inverse one by three, cos inverse two by three, none. We have to find the diagonal between, we have to find the angle between two diagonals of a cube. And we are given four options, A, B, C, D, and we have to choose the right option. So let's go to the solution of question number four. To find the angle between two diagonals of a cube, we take the help of vector method. So let Theta be the angle between two diagonals of a cube. Cube is a three-dimensional solid object. So we have to take the edges of, we have to take the three edges, that means length, breadth, and height of cube along x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Taking length, height, and breadth of the edges of a cube along x-axis, y-axis and z-axis because a cube has three dimensions length, breadth and height. Let's join B and M, the opposite vertices and the other two opposite vertices O and P, joining OP and joining BC because they are the two diagonals of a cube and we have to find the angle between the two diagonals of a cube. That means we have to find angle between OP and angle between BM. So let's suppose theta is the angle between two diagonals of a cube, OP and BM. We know that we know that angle between two vectors, so OP and BM, taking as the first vector and second vector. So angle between two vectors, that means angle between the two diagonals OP and BM is equal to cos theta. Angle between two vectors is given by the formula cos theta is equal to a dot b by magnitude of a into magnitude of b. That means if theta is the angle between any two given vectors a and b, then the angle between two vectors is given by the formula cos theta is equal to a dot b by magnitude of a into magnitude of b. So by using the formula of angle between two vectors, we can write cos theta. That means angle between op and bm. Cos theta is called op into bm. Op into bm divided by magnitude of op into magnitude of bm. Vector OP. Vector OP we can take as A comma A comma A. Vector OP. OP is the position vector of the point P which is equal to A comma A comma A. That means X component, Y component and Z component. We can take as A. We can take H equal to A. Supposing the length of H of cube equals to H. Equals to A because the length of all the sides, the length of all the edges of a cube are equal. So if we suppose length of one edge of a cube equals to a, then length, breadth, and height all will be equal to a. So x, y, and z coordinates will be equal to a comma a comma a. Now, the vector bm. So b lies, the point b lies in the y-axis. So the coordinates of b we can take as 
the coordinates of B we can take as 0, a, 0. B lies in the y axis. So x component will be 0 and z component will be 0. So y component, y component will be equals to A. Similarly, the coordinates of the point M. The point M lies on xz plane xz plane so y component will be equal to 0 and x component will be equals to a and z component will be equals to a so the coordinates of the point m we can take a comma 0 comma a now we can easily find vector bm if you know the coordinates of any two point then the vector joining or we can say the displacement from first point to second point will be equal to x2 minus x1 that means a minus 0 we can write equal to a y2 minus y1 that means 0 minus a we can write as minus a and z2 minus z1 that means a minus 0 will be equals to a so vector bm is a comma minus a comma a now we need the magnitude of vector op the formula of magnitude is root x square plus y square plus z square we know vector op is a comma a comma a that means x y z all the three components x, y, z are equal. So according to the formula of magnitude, magnitude of any vector is given by the formula root x square plus y square plus z square. So a square plus a square plus a square. Now the magnitude of the vector bm. The magnitude of vector bm is root x square plus y square plus z square. That means a square minus minus plus a square plus a square. So using the formula of magnitude of vector. The magnitude of vector, if x, y, z components are given, then magnitude of vector is given by the formula root x square plus y square plus z square. So magnitude of OP and magnitude of BM we have got according to the formula of magnitude of vector. A comma A comma A, the first vector, that means the vector OP and the vector BM. Now we have to take the dot product. Now according to the formula of dot product, or we can say scalar product, if two vectors are given, x1 comma y1 comma z1 the xyz component of first vector x2 comma y2 comma z2 the xyz component of the second vector then the dot product will be called x1 into x2 plus y1 into y2 plus z1 into z2 that means a into a a square a into minus a minus a square a into a a square so using the formula of is called the product of two vectors if the first vector is x1 comma y1 comma z1 and the second vector is x2 comma y2 comma z2 then the scalar product of two vectors will be equal to x1 into x2 plus y1 into y2 plus z1 into z2 so by using the formula of the scalar product of two vectors we get a into a a square minus a square plus a square so this is the product of two vectors scalar product of two vectors now a square plus a square we get 3 a square the root of 3 is root 3 and the root of a square is a Similarly, a square plus a square means 3 a square. The root of 3 a square is root 3 into a. Now, plus a square minus a square cancels. So, a square is left. Root 3 root 3, we get 3. a into a, a square. a square a square cancels 1 by 3. That means the value of cos theta is 1 by 3. Therefore, theta is called cos inverse 1 by 3, which is the given option 4b cos inverse 1 by 3, which is the given option 4b cos inverse 1 by 3. So B is the right option. So we have to circle answer B. Let's go to question number five. Solution question number five. Question number five. The point which is equidistant from all three vertices of a triangle is called. The point which is equidistant from all three vertices of a triangle is called centroid, midpoint, center of incircle, none. Solution. The point which is equidistant from all three vertices of a triangle is called circumcenter of triangle because circumcenter is the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of three sides of a triangle circumcenter circumcenter is the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of all the three sides in this figure, the perpendicular bisector of the first side, the perpendicular bisector of the second side, and the perpendicular bisector of the third side. All the three perpendicular bisectors, they meet at a point, which is called circumcenter. And circumcenter of triangle is equidistant from all the three vertices of a triangle, because we can easily show the first two triangles congruent by right angle, by using the side 
angle and side by SAS exam by SAS fact we can show the first two triangles congruent so the distance of the first vertex from the circumcentral center and the distance from the second vertex from the circumcentral center they will be equal the corresponding size of congruent triangles similarly the second pair of triangles we can show congruent and the third pair of triangles we can show congruent that means the circumcentral center of a triangle the circumcentral center that means the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of the perpendicular bisector of three sides of a triangle always meet at a point which is called circumcentral center and circumcentral center is the point which is equidistance from all the three bodies of a triangle so none of the three options none of the given three options is true so we have to circle the option d none the point which is equidistance from all the three bodies of a triangle is called circumcentral center next let's go to question number six Entrance exam solution, set 3, question number 6. Question number 6, find the remainder when function fx equals to x square minus 3x plus 17 is divided by x minus 1. Find the remainder when function fx equals to x square minus 3x plus 17 is divided by x minus 1. We are given four options, a, b, c, d, and we have to choose the right option. So let's go to the solution of question number 6. Solution question number six. The remainder of the function fx is called x u minus 3x plus 17. When it is divided by x minus 1 is equal to what? We have to find the remainder when fx is called x q minus 3x plus 17 is divided by x minus 1. In order to find the remainder when fx is called x q minus 3x plus 17 is divided by x minus 1, we'll use remainder theorem. According to the remainder theorem, we know if fx is divided by x minus c. If a poly polynomial fx is divided by x minus c, then remainder is given by fc. The remainder is given by fc. That means fc is the remainder of the given function. The given function is fx is equal to xq minus 3x plus 17, and we have to divide it by x minus 1. So according to the remainder theorem, fc if we compare x minus 1 with x minus c, then c means 1. Therefore, remainder is equal to fc. fc, the value of c is 1. Remainder is equal to f of 1. Let's find the value of f of 1. To find the value of f of 1, we put the value of x is equal to 1 on both sides of the given function. Therefore, f1 is equal to the value of x is 1, 1 cube is 1, minus 3 into the value of x is 1, 3 into 1, plus 17 as it is. 17 plus 1, 18. 18 minus 3 is equal to 15. The value of f of 1 is equal to 15, which is the which is the remainder of the function fx is equal to x minus 3x plus 17 when divided by when it is divided by x minus 1. 15 is the remainder, which is the given option 60. 15, which is the given option 60. That means remainder is equal to 15. When fx is equal to x square minus 3x plus 17 is divided by x minus 1, the remainder is 15. So we have to circle C, which is the right option. Now let's go to question number 7. Question number 7. The roots of which of the following quadratic equations are imaginary? The roots of which of the following quadratic equations are imaginary? We are given A, B, C, D, four options, and we have to choose the right option. So let's go to the solution of question number seven. In question number seven, we are given four quadratic equations, one, two, three, four, and we have to identify which quadratic equation has imaginary roots. Let's factorize the first quadratic equation. x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. 5 1 is 5, 5 plus 1 6. That means if we factorize x square minus 6x plus 5, then we get two factors x minus 5 and x minus 1. x minus 5 into x minus 1 is equal to 0. We get x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 1. The first square equation that means x square minus 6x plus 5 has two roots 5 and 1, which are the real roots. 
Now let's factorize the next squared equation x square minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. If we factorize x square minus 4x plus 3, then we get two factors x minus 3 and x minus 1 because 3 1 is 3 and 3 plus 1 we get 4. x minus 3 into x minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 1. That means we get two roots or we can say we get two solutions of the given quad equations which are the real numbers or we can say which are the real roots. The next quad equation is x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. We cannot factorize the quad equation x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0 by first into last method. So we have to take the help of the formula of quad equation. To find the roots of x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0, we have to take the help of the formula of quad equation. We know the formula of quad equation is x is equal to minus b plus minus root b square minus 4ac by 2a. The value of a, b, c are all equal to 1. So when we substitute the value of a, b, c in the formula of quad equation, x is equal to minus b plus minus root b square minus 4ac by 2a, then minus b means 1 plus minus root b square means 1 square, that means 1, minus 4ac means 1 into 1, 1, 4, 1 is a 4. Then we get minus 1 plus minus minus root 3 by 2. The root of negative number is undefined in the real number system because we know that no the square of no real number the square of no real number is negative so x is equal to minus 1 plus minus minus root 3 by 2 is not real root which is imaginary roots or we can say complex roots of the given quadratic function next is question next expression is next squared equation is 4x squared plus 8x minus 5 we can easily factorize by first and last method 5 for the 20 10 to the 10 20, 10 minus 2, we get 8. That means we get two factors, 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 5. 2x minus 1 into x plus 5 is 0. And uh, we get two roots. That means we get two solutions of the quad equation. x is equal to 1 by 2. And the second root is x is equal to minus 5 by 2. That means 4x plus 8x minus 5 is equal to 0. It also gives two real roots. So we can say, according to the question, x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0 gives imaginary roots. Which, which is the given option 7c which is the given option 7c that means x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0 has imaginary roots let's go to so we have to circle number 7c which is the right option let's go to question number 8 question number 8 which of the following is not a indeterminate form which of the following is not or indeterminate form we are given a b c d four options and we have to choose the right option so let's go to the solution of question number eight solution question number eight zero by zero the form zero by zero if any number is zero by zero form then it is called indeterminate form because zero by zero has not any fixed value it has not any certain value infinity by infinity form the expression infinity by infinity form is also indeterminate form because we cannot find any fixed value of infinity by infinity the expression 1 by 0 the value of 1 by 0 something divided by 0 we get infinity that means 1 by 0 equals infinity we get a certain value so it is called determinate form that means 1 by 0 gives infinity 1 by 0 gives certain number which is known as determinate form. So 1 by 0 is called determinate form because we can determine the value of 1 by 0. 0 power 0. The value of 0 by 0 we cannot determine exactly. So it is called indeterminate form. The expression which doesn't give any finite value, the expression which doesn't give any certain value is called indeterminate form. Or we can say the expression which cannot be determined is called indeterminate form. So according to the question, 0 by 0, infinity by infinity, and 0 power 0 are indeterminate form. And 1 by 0, the value of 1 by 0, we know infinity. So 1 by 0 is determinate form. Therefore, 1 by 0 is not, 1 by 0 is not indeterminate form, which is the given option 8C. Which is the given option 8C. So we have to circle 8C. 8C is the right option. Let's go to question number 9. Question number 9. A single equation representing both the lines x plus y is equal to 0 and x plus y is equal to 0 is. A single equation representing both the lines 
x plus y is equal to 0 and x plus 2y is equal to 0 is we are given a b c d four options and we have to choose the right option so let's go to the solution of question number nine in question number nine we are given x plus y is equal to 0 first equation and x plus 2y is equal to 0 second equations we are given two equations x plus y is equal to 0 and x plus 2y is equal to 0 and we have to find a single equation which represents both the equation 1 and 2 now in order to find the single equation when two equations are given we have to multiply the product of any two equations represent a single equation so x plus y into x plus 2y that means if we multiply LHS and RHS that means x plus y into x plus 2y and 0 into 0 is equal to 0 so we have to take the product of LHS and RHS then we get a single equation x plus y into x plus 2y is equal to 0 so when we multiply x plus y and x plus 2y we get x squared plus 3xy plus 2y squared is equal to 0 which is the given option 90 that means x squared plus 3x plus 2y squared is equal to 0 represents a single equation of the given two equations x plus y is 0 and x plus 2y is equal to 0 question number 10 the expression denoted by imaginary number i is the expression denoted by imaginary number i is root of minus 1 minus 1 root of minus 2 1 by root of minus 1 so we are given a b c d four options and we have to choose the right option so let's go to the solution of question number 10 solution question number 10 the imaginary number i is equal to root of minus 1 which is the given option 10a i is called imaginary number and the value of image number that means i is given by root of minus 1 the image number root of minus 1 is denoted by i which is known as the image number so according to the question the given option is 10a according to the question the given option is 10a that means root of minus 1 is the imaginary number which is denoted by i let's go to question number 11 question number 11 the x-axis may be represented by the equation x plus y is equal to 1 x minus y is equal to 1 y plus 1 is equal to 1 x is equal to 0 the x-axis may be represented by the equations we are given 1 2 3 4 options and we have to choose the right option so let's go to the solution of question number 11 solution of question number 11 y plus 1 is equal to 1 the equation y plus 1 is equal to 1 after solving we get 1 minus 1 0 that means y is equal to 0 which is the equation of x axis y is equal to 0 represents the equation of x axis because in the x axis the value of y is always 0 which is the given option 11c which is the given option 11c that means y plus 1 is equal to 1 y plus 1 is equal to 1 represents x axis so 11c is the right option so we have to circle 11c let's go to question number 12 question number 12 we have to find integration of x into e power x dx equals to we are given a b c d four options and we have to choose the right options we have to find integration of x into e power x dx that means we have to find antiderivative of the product of two functions x and ax and we are given four options a b c d and we have to choose the right option so let's go to the solution of question number 12 solution of question number 12 we are given the product of two functions x into e power x and we have to find the antiderivative of the product of two functions with respect to x so we have to apply the product rule before we apply the product rule we have to compare x into e to the power x with l a t l means logarithmic function a means algebraic function t means derivative function and e means exponential function so according to the order of l a t a means algebraic function and e means exponential function so we are given algebraic and exponential function so according to the order of l a t algebraic function comes first then exponential function that means algebraic function we have to take as the first function and exponential function we have to take as the second function so according to the order of LAT we have to choose the given two functions as the first function and the second function so here we have to choose a means algebraic x as the first function e means exponential ex we have to choose as the second function that means we can suppose first function as u and the second function as b b now according to the product rule of antiderivative the antiderivative of u into b dx is given by 
the first function we keep as it is u b dx minus d by dx of u integration of v dx that means we have to take the first function at first then antiderivative of second function minus derivative of first function antiderivative of second function whole bracket whole integration so this is according to the rule of the antiderivative of product of two functions first into first into antiderivative of second function minus derivative of first function antiderivative of second function whole bracket and whole integration now x x is as it is the antiderivative of ex the antiderivative of the function ex is ex minus d by dx of x the derivative of x is 1 e to the power x antiderivative e to the power x x into x as it is minus 1 into x x antiderivative of ex or we can say integration of ex is ex now if we take ex common then we have x minus 1 plus c plus c c is the constant of integration so after finding antiderivative we have to take the constant of integration ourselves which is the required answer which is the given option 12a which is the given option 12a that means the antiderivative of x into e power x dx is x minus 1 e power x plus c so we have to circle answer 12a now let's go to question number 13 which of the following points lies in the line x plus 2a plus 1 is equal to 0 we are given four options and we have to choose the right option so this is a very simple question solution question number 13 x plus 2a plus 1 is 0 the given equation is x plus 2a plus 1 is 0 the first point is x is equal to 3 y is equal to 2 so if we put the value of x3 and the value of y2 then 3 plus 2 to the 4 4 plus 1 that means 7 plus 1 8 8 is equal to 0 which is false that means x is equal to 3 y is equal to 2 doesn't satisfy the given equation now the second point is given x is equal to 1 y is equal to minus 1 and the given equation is x plus 2a plus 1 is equal to 0 so when we take value of x1 and value of y minus 1 then we get 1 plus 2 ones are 2 minus 2 plus 1 1 plus 1 2 2 minus 2 0 that means 0 is equal to 0 it shows that the point x is equal to 1 and y is equal to minus 1 satisfies the given equation now the next point is x is equal to 0 y is equal to 1 and the given equation is x plus 2 y plus 1 is equal to 0 so when we put value of x 0 and the value of y 1 then we get 0 plus 2 plus 1 equals 0 2 plus 1 is 3 3 is equal to 0 which is false 3 is equal to 0 3 cannot be equal to 0 which is false now the next point the last point is given x is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to 1 and the equation is x plus 2y plus 1 is 0 if we put value of x minus 1 and the value of y plus 1 then we get minus 1 2 ones are 2 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 cancel we get 2 is equal to 0 2 cannot be equal to 0 that means 2 equals to 0 it is false statement so according to the question the point according to the question the point 1 comma minus 1 satisfies the given equation hence the given option is 13b that means the second point satisfies the given equation 13b 13b that means 1 comma minus 1 is the right option so we have to circle 13b now let's go to question number 14 in a triangle a is called 30 degree b is called 45 degree and the value of b is equal to then a is equal to we are given a b c to four options in a triangle the angle a is 30 degree the angle b is 45 degree the value of the side b is equal to two then we have to find the value of a we are given we have to find the side a and we are given a b c t four options and we have to do the right option so let's go to the solution of question number 14 question number 14 we are given two angles and the length of one side and we have to find the side a the angle A is given 30 degree, angle B is given 45 degree, and the side B is given 2. So we have to apply sign rule. Now the angle opposite of the side opposite of angle A, we can suppose as we can denote by a small letter A. The side opposite to angle B, we can suppose as we can suppose by the letter small b. So we know angle A, angle B, and we have to find and we have to find the side A if the side B is given to. So according to the sign rule of triangle according to the properties of triangle or we can say according to the sign law of triangle a by sine a a by sine a is equal to b by sine b according to the properties of triangle according to the sign law of triangle a by sine a a by sine a is equal to b by sine b is equal to c by sine c so we have taken a by sine a is called b by sine b which is according to the properties of triangle or we can say which is according to the sign law of triangle the ratio of the 
sine angle and the angle opposite and the according to the sign law of triangle the sign angle the ratio of the sign angle and its opposite side the ratio of sign angle and its opposite side are always in proportion that means we can write a by sin a is equal to b by sin b is equal to c by sin c the ratio of sin angle the ratio of sin angle and its opposite side are always in proportion so this is according to the sign law of triangle now a means the side a sin a angle a is given 30 degrees so sin 30 degree is equal to b the length of the side b is equal to 2 so 2 by sin b angle b is 45 degree 2 by sin 45 degree a as it is sin 30 value is 1 by 2 equals to 2 sin 45 means 1 by 2 2 so if we take reciprocal of 1 by 2 we'll get 2a 2a is equal to if we take reciprocal of 1 by root 2 then we get 2 root 2 2 to cancel we get value of a is equal to root 2 that means the length of the side bc or we can say the value of a is equal to root 2 which is the given option 14c root 2 which is the given option 14c root 2 so we have to circle answer c which is the right option let's go to question number 15 if omega is one of the cube roots of unity then 1 plus omega plus omega square is equal to we are given a b c d four options and we have to choose the best option let's go to the solution solution question number 15 the value of 1 plus omega plus omega square. We have to find the value of 1 plus omega plus omega square. The value of 1 plus omega plus omega square is always equal to 0. Because omega is the cube root of unity. We know there are 3 cube roots of unity. That means 3 cube roots of 1. The first one is 1 which is real root. And the other 2 roots are minus 1 plus minus minus root 3 by 2. Which are the imaginary cube roots of 1. Now when we take the sum of the three cube roots, one is the real root, omega and omega square. Omega and omega square are the imaginary cube roots of one. So omega is minus one plus root of minus three by two. And omega square we can take minus one minus root three by two. And when we take the sum of three cube roots, when we take the sum of three cube roots of unity, that means one plus omega plus omega square, the sum is always equal to zero, which is the given option 15b, zero which is the given option 15b0 that means if omega is one of the cube roots of unity then the sum 1 plus omega plus omega square is 0 so 15b is the right option and we have to choose the option b next let's go to question number 16 question number 16 cos inverse root 3 by 2 is equal to x then x equals to abcd we are given four options and we have to choose the right option cos inverse root 3 by 2 is given equal to x and we have to find the value of x we are given A, B, C, D, four options and we have to choose the right option. So let's go to solution of question number 16. Solution question number 16. Cos inverse root 3 by 2 is equal to x. We have to solve this equation and find the value of x. Cos inverse as it is, root 3 by 2. We know that root 3 by 2 is the value of cos 30 degree. So root 3 by 2 changing into cosine function. So root 3 by 2 means we know the cos 30 degree. The value of cos 30 degree is root 3 by 2. Now cos and cos inverse they will cancel and we get the value of x is equal to 30 degree because cos inverse cos x is equal to x that means cos and cos inverse they are inverse of each other so the value of x we get 30 degree which is the given option 16b which is the given option 16b that means 30 degree so this is the right option and we have to circle it now let's go to question number 17 Question number 17. Determinant of 3, 4, 5, 15, 21, 26, 21, 29, 36. So we are given 3 by 3 determinant and we have to find the value of we have to find the value of the 3 by 3 given determinant. We are given A, B, C, D, 4 options and we have to choose the right option. So let's go to the solution of question number 17. Solution question number 17. 3, 4, 5, 15, 21, 26, 21, 29, 36. Solution, question number 17, we are given 3 by 3 determinant and we have to find the value. So first row, second row and third row. If we take the difference of second row and third row, 21 minus 15, we get 6. 29 minus 21, we get 8. 36 minus 26, we get 10. Now from 6, 8, 10, we can take 2 common. So if we take 2 common, then we'll have 2, 3, 6, 
2 4 is 8 2 5 is 10 so after taking two common from the third row the first row and third row are equal because 3 4 5 and again we have the same numbers 3 4 5 so first row and third row are equal so if any two row are equal if any two rows are equal then the value of determinant is zero if any two rows or if any two columns are equal then according to the property of determinant the value of determinant is equal to zero so we can write directly the value of the given determinant equals to zero so two into zero is equal to zero which is the given option which is the given option 17 c equals to zero which is the given option 17 c the value is equal to zero 17 c is the right option so we'll circle 17 c so let's go to question number 18 d by dx of log x that means we are find derivative of log x and we are given a b c t four options so let's go to solution of question number 18 d by dx of log x we are find the derivative of log x and according to the formula of derivative derivative of log x is equal to 1 by x which is the given option 18b 1 by x which is the given option 18b 1 by x so we have to circle 18b which is the best option which is the right option let's 